Hello again. John and I are doing another classical Ashtanga asana practice for you. And we'll be doing some fun stuff today, just some extra full vinyasa, maybe a couple arm balances like we did on the last one. Let's start off with our three deep breaths. Standing up tall, feet together if they touch, or just parallel if not. Nice, loose neck and shoulders. One more breath. And start it on the scar. Nice deep inhale up, looking up. Exhaling down to the right wrist. Inhale, fingers by the feet, look to the front of the mat. Exhale to the left wrist. Inhale, hands down, looking forward, palms down. Feet back, exhale, forelimb stick. Deep inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Second chaturanga, exhale, downward facing dog. Let's bring those feet back up. Nice deep inhale. Exhale. Press towards the shins. And inhale to upward hands down. Right back up. Exhale to the right wrist. Fingers by the feet. Inhale. Look to the front of your mat. Exhale, left wrist. Deep inhale, look forward, palms down. Exhale, forelimb stick. Inhaling. And then the downward facing dog on the exhale. Bring those feet back up. Deep inhale. Exhale, bow to the shins. And inhale, upper hands mountain. Inhaling up. Exhale, right wrist. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, left wrist. Inhaling, lift the chest and chin. Palms down. Exhale, forward and stick. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog.
runter. Feet back up. Inhale, lift the chest and chin. Exhale, bow to the shins. Inhaling up. Inhale, Urdhva Hasta Tadasana. Exhale, Bhagavad Tadasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Tadasana. Exhaling, Bhagavad Tadasana again. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Tadasana. Exhaling, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale. Ujjangasana or Urdhva Mukha Svanasana and Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukhutanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. And inhale, Urdhva Hastatadasana. And then Samasthiti Namaskara. Vinyasa, Tupadatanasana. So all the same poses and breaths. as our sun salutation. But we take the nose down to the floor in four limb stick. Inhale and cobra after facing dog. And if you're doing the chaturanga, second one, nose tap. Let's bring those feet right up. Deep inhale, tips of the thumbs can just barely touch. Index and middle finger around the toes. Exhale, thumbs on the toes. And now a half for the alpha. And we'll bring those feet right back up. Pada Hastasana. Hands under the feet. Press into the palms. Exhale. Bow to the shins. And you can take a half vinyasa here or a full one if you want to come all the way back to some speed. And then we'll take it to Uttita Trikarasana. Exhale to the right wrist. Inhale, fingers beside the feet, look to the front of the mat. Inhale now, look forward. Four limbs stick on your exhale. Cobra or upward facing dog. 
Downward facing dog. Nice deep inhale. Right big toe to the front center of the mat. Second toe and heel perfectly aligned. Left arch at the back of the mat. Stretch out over that right leg. Keep it straight. Hand onto the shin, ankle, top of the foot, or to the big toe. Keep your spine neutral. Lift the crown of the skull just the tiniest bit. sides or take a half sannyasa to the other side. And then left big toe forward. Second toe in front of the heel, arch at the back. Reach out over that left leg. Here you can take a half or a full vinyasa. Or just rest on the knees. And we'll take it through to partial konasana. Stick, drop into the nose. You can go ahead and do that on the knees if you need to. Let's bring that right leg forward. Big step into partial pranasana. Back foot 90. Thigh parallel to the floor. Knee above the ankle, not in front or behind. Elbow to the knee, arm up. Hand inside the foot, arm and leg together, arm up. Or hand outside the foot arm over. Pranamta. And you can take a half vinyasa or just switch sides. <coughs> Stand up tall, keep your body centered. Second toe, heel, arch. Elbow to the knee, arm up. Hand inside the foot, arm up. Or hand outside the foot, and we'll take the arm over. We're going to switch sides. We're going to come into bound side angle pose. Bada Hasta Partial Pranasana. Legs in the same position. Let's bring that left arm behind the back onto the right thigh. Thigh parallel. Hand to the inside of the ankle. Looking up. Or we can sink forward. Wrap the right arm under the right leg. Palm faces out and look up. Pronoun. 
runter. Herz in die Nase. Und ich switch da ein. Bring that left foot forward. Right arm around onto the left thigh. Left hand to the ankle. Or take that left arm under. Reaching around the leg. Palm faces out. You can straighten your front leg in the bottom position. Pranamta. Let's take a half vinyasa to the knees or a full vinyasa to Samastiti. We're going to turn to the back of the mat on the inhale. Take a half vinyasa or switch sides. Bring that right foot back. Stand up tall, feet are a little closer. Centered in your mat. Thumbs on the front of the thighs and hips. Deep inhale. And exhaling, fold. Press your shoulder gently up and back. Surrender your neck. And Pranamta. Let's turn to the front. Switch sides or half the yasa. Pranata. 
control your release, no ricochets. Turn to the back, half the yasa, or switch sides. Last pose in the sequence. Bound big toes, expanded leg, intense stretch. Bada, Panangushta, Prasarya Padasanasana. Inhale, lift up. Exhale down, take the big toes. Second inhale, lift up. Second exhale, fold. Take a full vinyasa up to Samastiti, or you can just step to the front of the mat. <laughs> Keep your drishti focused where you've got it just above eye level, right leg out, then down. Activate that right leg. Deep inhale, lift that left foot into the right groin. Press your buttocks gently together. Tuck the tailbone slightly. Hands to the mascara. Soft neck and shoulders. So now if you're using a block, take it in your left hand. You can use the block to give you a few extra inches of reach in case your hamstrings and hips aren't having this pose. Otherwise, take that right arm out back by your right hip. Inhale, left arm up. Drishti down to the front right corner of your mat. Left leg stay anchored. Control your lift. Take that hand down. Put it to the outside of your foot and work to gently engage and lift up. Slight bend of the right leg, control your lift, back up to the 
the front of our mats. Nice, loose neck and shoulders as we come to Samasthiti Namaskara, Namaskara. And then a full vinyasa. Down the back, right wrist on the exhale. Fingers by the feet, look to the front of the mat on your inhale. Exhale to the left. Inhale, hands down, chest up, palms down. Forelimbs stick to the tip of the nose. Using the knees if you need to. Practicing good form. And from downward facing dog, let's come into an unmodified Virabhadrasana. So we bring our left foot to the back center of the mat. So we're up on the big toe. Right ankle, left wrist even. Right hand on the outside of the right knee. Just look forward. Switch sides, <clears throat> taking a half vinyasa or just swapping legs. Right big toe to the back center of your mat, left big toe to the front, left wrist or left ankle, right wrist even, left hand to the outside of the left knee. Soft neck and shoulders. So 
go ahead and come forward quietly. Step or hop. Ankles crossed. Drop to the butt. So our heel bones come off the front of our mat onto our floor. Ankle bones pretty much even with the front edge of the mat. We always want to kind of return to the same position on the mat. It's tempting to kind of jump forward, to jump back, to move relative to the edges of the mat. But we really want to be disciplined and just constantly return to this sort of neutral position in the seated sequence and always having our hands kind of two or three inches from the front of our mat for our vinyasa or resetting so that's what we're coming back to. So from here, we're going to go into both big toes, west and tent stretch. Deep inhale, reaching up. Exhaling. Hands down, snag those big toes. So you can just hang out here, good posture, 90 degrees, or take your half vinyasa. So back to that same position. And we're going to come into both feet, western type stretch, Ubaya Pada, Paschimottanasana. So when we say both feet, we have an option normally of either coming around the top part of the foot or the heel. We're doing three of these today. So we're going to come around the top part of the foot using our strap or hands just below the pinky toes. Inhale up. Lengthen and fold. Exhale. Staying where you are, or taking your half vinyasa back to that position for the third pose in the sequence. Heels on the floor, ankles even on the front of the mat. Same thing. We're going to lift up. We're going to come down, having our pinky finger and sides of the hands resting towards the floor. So we exhale down. So let's take a half vinyasa to the knees, just dropping back comfortably, or a full vinyasa. Throw to some speed. And remember, you can kind of do what you like. So if you need to just take it easy, skip some vinyasa. Go ahead and do the half. Postures are more important than vinyasa. And breath is more important than postures. Let's come back to Nandasana. We'll be coming into half lotus, west and tight stretch. So as we drop down here, lean forward to that right ankle. Bring your leg up, 
out to the side, turn from the hip socket, fold, and drop your ankle to the inside of your left leg. Soften your left thigh, contract one quarter of an inch, just a little bit of a contraction. Inhale, open the right body, and exhale, taking the foot however you reasonably can. Take our half vinyasa, or stay right where you are in Dandasana. Back down. Same spots on the mat. Let's reach under the left ankle. Take the leg out to the left. Turn your thigh bone at the hip socket. Fold and press into the right groin and thigh. Soft right leg, slight contraction. Inhale off the left body. And then exhale down. Let's take a half vinyasa or stay right in Dandasana. Back to the seated position. And let's come into Marichyasana. So we're going to come in with half lotus Marichyasana, Ardha Padma Marichyasana, right leg out. We have a couple of options. We can bring that right ankle above the left knee or all the way up to the abdomen. If we're bringing it to the left knee because our hips are tighter, we're going to go ahead and pull that left knee up, hug that right leg, or support ourselves with our hands. If you have a little bit more hip mobility, bring that right leg in, lean into the right buttock and thigh, and pull your left foot back so it's even with your shoulder. Reach around with your left hand, and hook your right wrist. Sit up tall. Pranamta. So you can drop back down to Dandasana, cross your ankles and take your half vinyasa, or pull your left leg up onto your left shoulder. Strong hands, core strength. Back to that seated position. Now because I want my heels off the front of the mat, I'm gonna scoop forward, so I'm always in the same position. Let's take that left foot out, turn above the knee or to the abdomen and then come into your variation. Pull that right ankle back, even with the shoulder, grabbing the right wrist, left wrist, sorry. Sit up tall, soft neck. Take a half vinyasa to the knees or a full vinyasa, and you can go ahead and come out of this pose and into your vinyasa however you like. We'll take it down to one 
four-legged pigeon. So from downward facing dog or the knees, come onto the hands, center the right foot at the back of the mat, and step the left leg forward. Remember in pigeon, you should always feel this in the butt and maybe the back thigh. You should never feel it in the front knee. If you're feeling it in the knee, move your foot back towards your pelvis to offset. So nice deep inhale, lever yourself up in a brief opening, and keep that leg as you bow into the floor. And switch sides, half the yasa, or just swap legs. Bring that right leg forward now, left foot to the back center of the mat. And again, you should feel this in the buttock or hip, not the knee. Inhale, lengthen. Keep that length as you exhale down and surrender. Switch sides again by taking a half of yasa or swapping legs. So we're going to bring our left leg forward, deliberately keeping it soft. Now, for a lot of people, the hips and thighs are very stiff and they may be really elevated on that front leg. So there's a tendency in these pigeon poses to cheat the pose by staying on the left side. We really want to be up and over with our weight to the right. So get your butt up off that left side. No matter how high up you feel you are, left hand over in front of the left shin, right foot up, grab the foot, or bind and press it down to the hip. Yasa to the knees or a fold in yasa to some of Down. 
to the seated position through our vinyasa. Exhaling to the right wrist. Inhaling, fingers by the feet, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, left wrist. Inhale, look forward. Look down, palms down. Exhale to the nose. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. And then the seated position. So Dandasana again. Heels on the floor. Ankles even with the front edge of the mat. We're coming into Janu Shirshasana. So we're going to take that right foot and tuck it into the left groin. So kind of pull that heel back. Squeeze your foot into your groin. Gently contract that left leg no more than a quarter of an inch. Open the right body and exhale down. Stay in Dandasana, both legs up, or take a half in Yasa. We'll draw that left foot into the right groin. Slight activation of that right leg, a quarter of an inch of a lift. Inhale the left body open and exhale down. Dandasana or your half in Yasa. Back down. We're going to come into Parigasana. So we're going to take our right leg either straight out to the side if you have knee sensitivities, or we're going to take our right leg out and fold our foot back to our buttock. This folded position is called half hero. So we've got our leg in a nice straight line, thigh bone 90 degrees from the front leg. We're still coming down into our front leg. So we're going to open the right body with a deep inhale up and then extend down slowly and work to connect with that foot. And we'll take a half vinyasa, or just switch sides by staying in Dandasana. So what you did on the other side, you do on this side. Even if one knee is restricted and the other one isn't, we always do the same thing. So we work with the joint that has the greatest restrictions because that way we heal it as it repairs and opens. So we've got that right leg forward, our left knee is out to the side, 90 degrees, open the left body, and then controlled and slow, really lengthen and submit into that front leg, however that looks for you. Up. 
And let's take a half the nyasa or a full the nyasa. into the feet. And from out to Soften those arms. And now soften your feet. So you can widen them, you can pivot them. Some people like to cross a foot over the other. It's just a comfortable kneeling position. Legs can go wider, whatever works for you. We'll take those arms out, soften the neck and shoulders. Left arm over the right, and again, if you have shoulder problems, go ahead and hug rather than bind. And pronounce Soften those arms out. Now you can stay right in this relaxed knee position or take your half and the up. Back to Dwaypada Madrasa, both feet thunderbolt, or Dwaypada Gushta, both big toes thunderbolt. So now the feet are still together, you have your legs as close as your skeletal morphology permits. Heel bones below the buttocks, shoulders above the hips, spine straight, hands on the hips. Sit right down into those feet. Really try not to cheat this. And pronounce. You can come to a soft kneeling position or take a half of yasa. So down to Virasana. So we start with the legs together and we get the calves out of the way so that we're going to drop towards the floor between the feet. Now if you need to use a block to shield your knees, go ahead and stick it under your butt. So your legs are as close together as they permit. Some people's thighs and knees will touch, other people's groin muscles will touch. Check your feet. Your second toe should be straight behind the middle of your heel. There shouldn't be any room to jam any fingers or anything in between the sides of your thighs and the insides of your feet. Rest your hands softly on the legs, palms up or down, doesn't matter. Shoulders down and back, soft neck. Slow. 
slowly forward. Stretch out and down, facing dog, or take your half and half up. Foot one way or another. You want to open up those legs for a moment. And then we're going to come into Bhujasana, which is the squat. So take your ankles up behind your wrists. So we are towards the front of our mats. So we're going to drop down into the ankle space. Our feet have turned out about 45 degrees. <clears throat> Some people can sit into a squat with their knees forward. We want to get them out to the sides of the rib cage. So take your elbows inside your legs. Nice and loose for the neck and shoulders. We'll take it right back to our seated position. You can stay right here, stretch the legs out and sit upright in Dandasana, or just bring the legs to a crossed position and take a half vinyasa. We'll be returning, bound angle. So if you're doing the vinyasa, return to your normal position, pull those feet in but not all the way, because we're going to bind forward here, or bow forward here. So we're holding the feet gently, doesn't matter how, and working to come down. Now if you have a lot of hip and groin mobility, you can come into something that's preparatory to Mula Bandhasana, Parsh Charma Mula Bandhasana. Open those feet up, pick your torso up and press your shin bones down. So you can see that the soles of the feet really need to be rotated all the way up. Press your navel down into your heels and back. Pranamta. 
Support yourself with your hands. Roll back and up. Shield the knees. Dandasana or half vinyasa. Back to Dandasana. We're going to be taking our legs out into our split. So Upavishta Konasana. <clears throat> Seated angle pose. Bring those legs out to the side. Now you can either scoop forward or back or just open your legs, however that works for you. But to start, we're really just going to sit up very straight. So you can have your hands in front of you or behind, whatever gives you lift. Strong straight legs, soft neck. One more breath here on the warm up. Now, if you can't come down onto your abdomen, you want to support yourself. You can take a block onto your navel, you can come to your hands, you can stretch your arms forward, you can come to your big toes. When you do come forward, though, at some point your feet are going to kind of roll inward, that's okay. Support the body, control your lift, shield your knees by taking the hands inside them, lift your legs back in, tuck, half vinyasa to the knees for a full vinyasa. Straight on your mat here if you need to. And then we're going to take it down, back to the seated position for our last couple poses before closing work. So now you can stay right here in half a full lotus, or if you want, you can come through your vinyasa. If you want to jump out of lotus, go ahead and tuck those feet onto the arms, lift with your core, draw, and transfer through. Back to the seated position. And we'll do the same thing, taking that left leg up. A little bit deeper. Take that right leg under, so your knees are a little bit closer, and that left leg is really elevated in your half lotus, or 
Tuck tight in your full locus. Tuck those feet onto the backs of your arms, or you can come out and take your half vinyasa down to the knees. So we'll all be coming to the knees. So closing sequence is about poses that help us cool down, or about poses that we can kind of do because we're really heated up and we're limber. We're going to take this opportunity to close with a little bit of a groin stretch, a shtanga, Frog or Hatha Frog, either one. So Hatha Mandukasana or Hatha Bekasana, which is the Hatha Frog. You want to scoot to the center of your mat with your knees on the edge. We're going to come forward onto the stomach and take the legs out straight from the hips, neither in front nor behind the buttocks. So you may not get as low as you think you should. So we're going to take those legs out to the side you want to start with your big toes, sort of even with your knees, so your legs are square. And you just lay those legs down. And drop the pelvis down into the groin. When you drop the pelvis down, you're also pushing back with your tailbone and buttocks. Now your abdomen is only on the floor if your thighs and groin are on the floor. Otherwise, you're hovering kind of in this position, really working into the groin. So this is Hatha Vekasana. You can do the same position by bringing your feet together as well. And that's Ashtanga Frog, Ashtanga Mandukasana. here. Pranonto. So to come out of this, ease your legs out, kind of take it a couple steps at a time, <clears throat> push back, come onto your knees on the mat, and then come into child's pose for a few breaths to reset the groin, the hips, and the lower back. Left leg up, over to the right, 90 degrees, 
Strong straight right leg, twist open. If you don't do spinal twists or you have a restriction in your back that prevents it, go ahead and come to Saranga Asana. So now if you're going to spinal twist, you're going to come back to neutral, hips two inches to the right, knees up, over to the left, stacking perfectly straight, and then rolling back through the torso so that you're very open and supple. It's a spinal twist, not a pelvic twist. So make sure that you're staying in that really aligned 90 degree length of the hips. If you're in the shoulder stand, you can go ahead and come back up if you came out like I did to demonstrate, or if you're still in it, bring your legs into lotus or easy pose. So now we're all back to center, dropping down, stretch those legs out, press them or place them about mat width apart, make sure that you're in the center of your mat. <clears throat> After we stretch them out, we're just going to come into reclined bound angle, so lengthen those legs, then step the soles of your feet together distant from your pelvis, and lay nice and flat, letting the groin relax. Spine is flat. Stretch those legs out. <clears throat> then the legs in, ankles crossed, either roll up or you can turn to the side and push yourself up, whatever works for you. Where can I like to roll up? So you're just going to sit comfortably in half lotus, like this, Varda Padmasana or Muktasana, which is with your ankles crossed. We're going to come into Komukasana through the arms to close the practice. We stretch the back of the shoulders with Gartasana in the knees or on the knees. Now we're going to stretch the front by reaching up the spine with the right arm, keeping the rib cage open. Left arm comes up, head leans away, creates space in your deltoid and traps. Fold down, work to bring the fingers together or grab your strap or hand towel. Turn into the triceps of your left arm. Reach down, then lean into the triceps, 
with your cheek and temple. Take those hands back. Shake your hands out. Now, if you're coming into Shavasana here, as you should be, you're going to go ahead and stretch out onto your back. Ankles about the width of the mat, wherever they're comfortable. Arms are wide enough in Shavasana that your palms can face up. So for some people, that's really far out, and for other people, it's right by their sides. Whatever works for you. But you're going to stretch out on your back right now, lay nice and flat and long. And remember that you want to check in with how your alignment feels. So as you get settled and you're lying on your back, your eyes are closed. Lower jaw relaxes. Eyes still behind the eyelids. Body settles into the floor. Go ahead and take a nice deep breath. Brief pause. And relax as you exhale. Now take a moment to visit with yourself. Do your legs feel even from the midline of your body? Do your buttocks rest symmetrically on the floor? Do you feel that your shoulders are even pressed away from your shoulders or from your chest and your ears? Is everything relaxed and neutral? Take this moment to straighten out if you're not feeling that way. Shift the buttock, move a hip, adjust the knee or ankle, move your hand or elbow, kind of create a feeling of length and evenness because you really want to be comfortable in Shavasana and if you're doing it for 15 minutes like we do in class you really need to be as still as humanly possible because that allows the prana from practice to integrate with your body and heal everything if you're not taking that opportunity if you're uncomfortable you're devoting your prana to where your mind is traveling so you're sending your prana to a spot that's uncomfortable prana is neutral so your thoughts are determining what that prana is doing if you're sending it to an area that's uncomfortable and you're kind of fidgety, then that prana is going to exacerbate or enhance that fidgetiness and potentially that discomfort as well. So it's really about getting settled and aligned and relaxed. So that way you can heal and regenerate in a really neutral or positive space. So go ahead and take another deep breath right now if you're coming into Shavasana. Hold it for a moment. And now relax and surrender completely into stillness. We're going to go ahead and shut this off right now. But my wife and I thank you for joining us and we hope you're having a good time and that things are going as well as possible for you. Thank you and namaste.